Toussaint Louverture is the epitome of humanity. He realized early on that the condition he was in was totally insufferable. Toussaint Louverture recruited about three to 4,000 people, trained them, and they fought the French, the British, and the Spanish army for 12 years. But the credit did not rest with Toussaint alone. He had several able commanders working under him, men like Jean-Jacques Dessalines, who shared his soldiers' life experiences more closely than Toussaint. Toussaint realized that Spain had a king, England had a king, and France was talking about liberty, equality, fraternity. All men equal. For Dessalines and Toussaint, emancipation changed everything. They quickly trimmed their sails to the new order. So were his followers. It tipped the balance. Before long, Toussaint, Dessalines, and the army of ex-slaves pushed the Spanish out of Saint-Domingue. The British soon followed. They didn't like it at all that there was a black general beating white armies. They didn't like it. Slaveholders everywhere were stunned and worried. Toussaint had already been appointed brigadier general and then governor of Saint-Domingue. No black man had ever risen so far in the colonies. He was called the Black George Washington. He fought off three empires and enraged Napoleon. The prospect of a black republic is equally disturbing to the Spanish, the English, and the Americans. In 1798, as Toussaint Louverture was evicting the last of the British from his island, another French general battled British interest halfway around the world in Egypt. His name was Napoleon Bonaparte. Well, Toussaint and Napoleon in many ways are, are similar. Both were a little bit from the margins of French society. They succeeded through military brilliance. And they were both incredible military leaders. And they became political leaders as a result of their military experience. But Napoleon's victories would put Toussaint at risk. Just months after conquering Egypt, Napoleon marched into Paris. A coup d'etat toppled the revolutionary government, and Napoleon took the reins of power. The revolution is over, he declared. I am the revolution. As Napoleon is rising to power in France, Toussaint is watching closely about what's going on. He knows several things. He knows, first of all, that there are very powerful pro-slavery voices in France who are, who are agitating against him, attacking him, and proposing that slavery actually be recreated in some form in Saint-Domingue. Toussaint's luster began to tarnish. Napoleon, on the other hand, was riding high. He restructured the government and proclaimed a new constitution for France. Far from enshrining black emancipation, it opened the door for France to reinstitute slavery in its colonies. When Louverture heard that, he really understood that something was changing. And more ominously, he understood that he didn't have any way to influence Napoleon. And so what he did in a kind of typical Toussaint fashion is he responded by saying, okay, San Domingo's gonna have its own laws. Well, here they are. I'm in charge here, I might as well write the constitution. Toussaint's constitution decreed slavery would never exist in Saint-Domingue again, and it was the first in history to prohibit discrimination based on skin color, a milestone that U.S. law would not guarantee for another 150 years. That was enough to, uh, to send Napoleon over the edge. Napoleon Bonaparte had had enough of revolution, and according to Napoleon, the U.S. president 
Thomas Jefferson shared his view. The prospect of a black republic is equally disturbing to the Spanish, the English, and the Americans. Jefferson has promised that at the instant the French army has arrived, all measures will be taken to starve Toussaint. Rid us of these gilded Negroes, and we will have nothing more to wish for. Toussaint tried urgently to show Napoleon that military logic, if nothing else, proved the merit of black ambitions. His efforts failed. In 1802, Toussaint was stunned to see the largest French expeditionary force ever assembled entering Saint-Domingue's harbor. Its mission was simple. Napoleon wanted to turn back the clock. My decision to destroy the authority of the blacks in Saint-Domingue is not so much based on consideration of commerce and money as on the need to block forever the march of the blacks in the world. Toussaint Louverture fought the invading French army for three grueling months, but the island's black population, now disenchanted with his leadership, offered lackluster support. Toussaint's sons had been educated in France. They had even met Napoleon. Hoping again that Napoleon would understand his thinking, Toussaint peacefully boarded a ship for France. Saint-Domingue remained mostly calm in Toussaint's wake. Jacques Dessalines and the other black officers continued cooperating with French general Victor Leclerc. But then, news arrived from the nearby colony of Guadeloupe. Napoleon had reinstated slavery. And overthrowing me, Louverture wrote as he left for France, you have only cut down the trunk of the Liberty Tree of the Blacks and Saint-Domingue. It will spring back from the roots, for they are numerous and deep. Saint-Domingue erupted in anger and fear. Dessalines quickly broke from France. One more time, the former slaves of Saint-Domingue took to the field against European armies. Dessalines is a no-holds-bar, no-compromising leader and figure who is going to eradicate anything that stands in the way of what the people have been mobilizing toward. The war becomes this extreme scorched earth kind of campaign in which Dessalines and others burn the towns in order to basically leave the French with, little, with no choice but to depart. Dessalines' scorched earth tactics worked. In 1803, the French army was finally driven out. We confronted dangers in order to gain our liberty and we will be able to confront death in order to keep it. Slaves had once accepted their chain because they had not experienced a state happier than slavery. But those days are over. The people of Saint-Domingue would rather be buried in the ruin of their country than suffer the return of slavery. Toussaint's ringing language showed his profound attachment to democratic ideals. In Saint-Domingue, Haiti became the world's first black republic.